Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolo Tech, and we're going to unbox the Motorola Droid Razor M. This is the latest Razor to come from Motorola. They recently announced, and it has some pretty impressive specs. They do have some other phones coming out, such as the Motorola Razor HD and HD Max. So this is the M, and let's see what it looks like. Now this one has a 4.3 inch screen as opposed to the other one. This is actually a Razor Max, a current Razor Max, to give you an idea of size. Uh, this is a 4.3 inch screen uh, that fits in a pretty small case. Pull this out here. This is the phone. We do have a 8 megapixel 1080p video camera on the back. Uh, mixed reviews online from those of that, that have actually used it so far, but we'll take a little bit more look at this in a second. We have some pretty impressive specs. We do have a 2000 milliamp hour battery good for 20 hours of talk time, which is something that uh, most phones I would like to see go that direction. Now inside we have our AC to USB wall adapter, pretty standard. They're in every Motorola box. We do have a USB to micro USB connector. And then we have something here I haven't seen. Card insertion removal tool. So it looks like it's a SIM card removal tool. It's kind of interesting. And then we have the normal literature. Start here. Global support, consumer information, product safety, and warranty. And let's take a look at the phone itself. It has some pretty impressive specs, and what that means is we have a dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor, which is pretty fast these days. We have a one gig of internal memory, along with 4.5 gigabytes of internal storage. Now, 20 hours talk time on a phone is something that's fantastic, especially when we have LTE. Now, this is the phone itself. On this side, we have, looks like a little screw here on the side, kind of a machine look to it. We have volume up and down, power on, sleep wake, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have what looks to be a little door here on the side. So we have a spot for the SIM card and a micro SD, which allows up to 32 gigabytes of expandable storage. We have a micro USB for the charge. And on the back, we have our camera with flash, speakerphone, microphones on the front here. And we do have a forward facing 0.3 uh, megapixel camera. Let's put the SIM card in. Here's the SIM card. Looks like it goes this way. We'll use this tool, I guess. Yep, there we go. It clicks in, and that's all this is for. I thought there might be a little hole like on the Lumia 900 and iPhone. We close this door. Hopefully you'll keep this door closed most of the time. It feels a little flimsy. But the phone itself is made out of aluminum, has Kevlar on the back, has a nanopolymer coating, something like Liquipel along those lines. And so it's a, supposed to be a pretty durable phone. The back is really nice, has a rubbery feel of the other Razer. You can see here's the current Razer Max to give you a size idea again. So those of you that don't want a giant screen, this is probably a good way to go. And this improves greatly over the screen that's on the current Razer. That's one area it did not excel in. And that means it has a pretty impressive spec list of 540 by 960 pixels with 256 pixels per inch. It's a super AMOLED display. So we'll wait for it to boot up. It looks pretty good just from what I see here. Hardly any bezel at all along this edge here. Feels pretty good in the hand. It's a good size phone. And welcome. Now this has Android 4.0 on it, soon to be upgraded to Jelly Bean. So this is Ice Cream Sandwich for those of you that aren't familiar with the operating system. The phone's been activated, and here's the main setup screen. Now the screen looks really nice. It's very crisp. It is really high resolution. And one of the nice things about the phone is it's a world phone. I get that question a lot. And the phone itself is actually supportive of not just LTE here in America, but it looks like just about every GSM, CDMA, UMTS, and LTE band just about worldwide. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Now you would have to see if that's available in your area, those particular frequencies, but it looks pretty good. We'll just get through this setup wizard here. We'll go next. We want to just get to the user interface, so we'll say not now. 
and see what the default interface looks like. The glass feels really nice. The whole phone feels really solid. It's pretty responsive. It wasn't there for a second, but that was just lag. That's interesting. We have quick settings. When we scroll to the right here, you can see that's. it looks like you just went into one of the menus. That's pretty interesting. Google Play Store. It wants me to sign in with a Google account, but that's the phone overall. The camera, I've heard some disappointing things about, but the phone... Just from using it and holding it in my hand for this little amount of time uh, and waiting for it to activate, it, it's pretty nice. It's built really well, and it's a really solid phone. It'll be interesting to see if the phone actually does get the kind of battery life they're claiming. Uh, that's one of the huge leaps we need to make in smartphones is get that kind of battery life. So the phone itself is just really nice, really uh, quite a nice design. In fact, I like it a lot more than the Razer the traditional razor. I think it just has a nicer, cleaner look and feels a little more industrial the way it's designed. And they both feel like they'll hold up well, but I just kind of, this is a, a great size phone. So we'll take a little bit closer look at it, do some comparisons later on, but just wanted to do a quick unboxing and first look. If anyone has any questions they'd like to ask regarding this phone, maybe about something you haven't seen elsewhere, please go ahead and feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.